put a boundary in the thing properly. And uh, it is, uh, you could remedy the situation by adding more distinction, by adding topics. You could remedy it by removing uh, distributivity and saying that really you meant the form PTRQ. Mm -hmm. And to add topics would be to add, a, say, L to the collection somewhere in a distinct manner. When you'd get it in stable form, as a matter of fact, which is very interestingly unstable, uh, but it's nevertheless form. Uh, you can also remedy it by noting that there are several solutions which can be arrived at if you insist upon saying this, because since it's a proto-language and since it's natural, I can't deny that people do say anything. And they can give certain manipulative consequences of their sticking to something. Now, I'm going to use only the, as I say, the thing is under development even now, and Geoffrey, for example, is, is actually developing it, and Dick Gregory is actually developing, Paul is actually developing, and so on, various people are. We all seem to be thinking along somewhat similar lines, and as a matter of fact, what I give here are not the unique solution, but all solutions to that particular one, which have had the following possibilities the possible kinds of resolution, of which this is perhaps most interesting. You replace T, T by T primed, and you replace R by R. R primed. What am I doing? Sorry. Ridiculous. Apologies. I do apologize. That's R prime primed, and that is T. Meant to be T prime primed, and retain P and retain Q, note that this happens where the arrows are supposed to point inside or penetrate the bundles which distinguish what we called coherent topics, but are now rendered distinct because they belong to different universes. So T is not equal to T primed is not equal to T prime primed, and R is not equal to R primed, is not equal to R prime primed. And what I've done is to create a distinction, which in this case is absolute. In fact, you can solve it with the tautomeric forms as well, or you can solve it by a trick, which is another illustrated by another construction, which is also illegitimate. And notice this is a is a actually a fundamental point that we have a bifurcation principle here, such that if you had a theory which only aggregated things that already had unity, we just have, you know, tatty old system theory. In fact, it, it, it's defective, of course, and everyone knows it's defective because the theoretical structure is defective for dealing with consciousness and the like, because indeed it has an axiom scheme that is somehow um, it doesn't matter whether you take a sort of overall holistic view or whether you take an atomistic view in a sense, but it is made up of units that are particulars in some sense, which is made up. And these are uniquely specified. Uh, in this case, you don't. You have a generator for these specifics. And in fact, this is a very fundamental generating principle because uh, whenever you bring together large representations, bifurcations typically do take place as well as coalescences taking place. So, I mean, I have very large structures, whole universes of overlapping things, and they are common enough. I mean, there's nothing peculiar about them. And bringing them together may or may not cause a bifurcation. These bags are meant to be full of letters. Uh, and bringing them together may or may not cause a bifurcation. Now, I was saying that Jeffrey, uh, that there are, Jeffrey was pointing out actually recently, there are several alternative solutions. I agree with this. Um, but all of them lead, uh, the, the one that is important, in fact, is the one that completely splits. There are others that do a partial split and so on, and they're very interesting. I brought, and it all has a different way. When we're getting together, handle this language, you can handle it obviously at several levels. You can handle it at a notational level, which I'm more or less doing now, minimal formalism. You can handle it at an operational level where you require a certain um, 
doability in some sort of uh, centrical complex. Um, and uh, here you begin to consider the curious structures of all of these things that are induced and are actually present in order that they shall be uh, performable, doable, that they shall work. And these structures are elaborate and may be expressed in various different ways. Um, but I, I'd like to indicate another kind. I mean, this is a, this sort of thing here is a typical mesh. It, it, it's, it's large. I mean, I don't have a picture of a typical small mesh somewhere. I expect you did. Uh, and uh, things that like this. And when you bring another one along, or if you add things to it, then it may well break apart. And it may rend itself into small bits. And it may even produce, as it actually has to in a limit, I think, uh, which is one of the points we're making, it has to have eigenvalues that go to infinity in all possible directions, so that it has self-replicating, indefinite self-replicating, and indefinitely differentiating as well, forms. Mm -hmm. So that you start off a process and it goes on, either making replicas in some cases, or in other cases, which Peter Clark has examined in some detail, under a process called saturation, uh, of producing always divergent forms and, in a way, seeking, well, in a way, absolutely seeking universes in which to live. But there are bits of language looking for a world. And that is how thought is made. Now, let's have a look at another interesting case, if you can't write. Would you like to uh, give me, please, the, the pruning of the internet of construction? Oh, how about that? <coughs> okay, well, you can well, it looks all right. Can well, well, how do you do it? I mean, how do you prune it? Prune it under P. So you would derive P from, on the one hand, Q. Uh, and, 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 and what? <coughs> how would you do it? A cluster uh, of well, well, you, don't, you don't. I mean, you point, you, I'm sorry, it isn't allowed. It, to be legitimate, this has to be prunable. It must have a it must have a dual interpretation as a as a, a process in some topology. Can you create a notation of TRS? Oh, oh yes, I do. In fact, what you've done here is to create a new node, and it's a different sort of thing, and it can only exist if others coexist with it. And we will say, let's say if that thing exists at omega zero, this thing exists at omega one, then this thing stands at omega zero for T R S pointer going to the coherence bundle. Uh, but here alpha stands sorry, apologies, do apologize. Alpha is created to stand with P and Q. Because alpha itself points to T R S. Now in fact, what you've done is a not create a bifurcation in that sense. You bifurcate it in a different order because this implies, as a matter of fact, that you have to justify uh, this thing by an analogy pointer from this, each of these, to something down here. And from this thing up here, justify its existence to the classes of these down here. Okay. These are the exemplars, in fact, of it. And there's an existence of the minus one, which justifies this generalization, and in turn induces an analogy up there. Just as in this case, where we had a bifurcation, and I've shown a couple of canonical forms now of uh, manipulation. One a bifurcation to the rule of Geneva, one of them a, a, um, a bifurcation which generates a generalization. This rule of Geneva is really saying these things are independent, but they're one one related. Now, depending whether you're talking in strict terms or whether you're talking in loose terms, I would say they're isomorphic, even though they're not equal. And that would be very loose, because the word isomorphism really ought to be reserved, actually, for talking about things that are literally isomorphic. What I actually mean is a faithful one-one functor between the categories these are representing. 
with an object part and a morphism part. And that these relations are indeed morphisms between categories of between object and a category, each of which has its own identity operator on it. Mm-hmm. And a category is characterized by its identity operator. Now, uh, we'll come back to, to yeah, the next, yeah. next operation on the, on the next yeah. page. Yeah, can you just deal with this one first? Yeah. Yeah. Now, you could refine that. You see, you could say how it's different and how it's, how it's related, because it isn't just perhaps the case that those are arbitrarily independent universes. There might be different moments or different places or different people or different institutions or different beliefs. Perfectly good. Uh, they're not completely independent, or you can say mechanically, and the calculus is that. The same as this. There's a morphine. So you fill this by similarity. You fill this by distinction. Delta. Okay. So just we're talking about different types, notice, of uh, coherence on the previous page, on the legitimate expressions there. So here we're talking about different sorts of distinction, which we easily can do. So it is, in fact, a logic of distinction, process, and coherence we're doing. And similarity, what sort of similarity is there? Well, there is actually a necessarily induced similarity, namely the prunings of these things, which cause different from the things themselves. But they are dual to them. At least that similarity exists. It has to be trivial in this particular case because of the images, more or less. Uh, the universe are images. Now, look, the same structure applies here, excepting your analogies are between things called generalizations and the exemplars or values under which these entities and concepts are generalized to generalized concepts. So, we've now added. Oh, no, we have made a new mesh. We have talked about different sorts of um, collectivity, distributive or not, and we've talked about different sorts of distinction, that's to say, distinctions between topics, which are maintained even though they occur here, and distinctions between kinds of universe, either in this sense of generalization, a general rubric for a process that leads to immensely complex structures, or analogy, again a process that leads to immensely complex structures, because you can have analogies between analogies and analogies. Uh, and hence it is a calculus which accommodates analogy, it therefore accommodates the statement in L, A agrees with B about C, for which there is an L starred a linguistic metaphor and is the fundamental statement um, in, in, in conversation theory. Hence, you can model any L in the proper extensions of L sub P. Now, I don't claim by any means to have fully explored L sub P, although we've used it explicitly for many years. Um, I don't believe anybody does. I believe it is a growing theory and it's extending the domain of conversation theory. It certainly is capable of speaking about conversation theory and we've achieved what we require, namely we can speak about varieties of consciousness and consciousness itself in this proto-language. It is not disallowed for us to do so. We can also speak about growth, evolution and such other matters in a, a way which is not just a an image of or a token for, but it is. Um, And we can talk in particular about consciousness, although I cannot say much about it, at least I'm allowed to say something about it within the formal framework. And this is a minimal framework, I believe, for cybernetics. A very minimal framework for cybernetics. Any other frame will be, of course, more elegant, perhaps locally, and it's very applicable. I'm not denying the value of, of system theory and so on. I think it's wonderful. It doesn't claim to accommodate these things. The work of, of, of excellent system theorists, and even my own early work, for that matter, is not very excellent. Um, it is in these ideas of Heinz's, in fact, and Gunther's of self-organization to essentially get this expression. But indeed, you remember we discussed these at the beginning, the requirement 
well, the ambition initially, the requirement actually, to accommodate consciousness of conversation there, I think. Its relation to Heinz's work on self-organization, and the later reinvention by John Nicholas, was much the same thing, but in rather more restrictive terms, actually. Heinz's acknowledgement early that this, in fact, could involve life, consciousness, etc., Gunn's assertion it must. Um, the, um, we talked about all this stuff, and indeed it is realizable in such a frame. Now, I maintain that the other frameworks of system theory, such as variables and state spaces and what have you, and statistics, and all of which are pegged to one simple X, for example, that's a particular sort of process mapping, are inadequate, because certainly they're inadequate to accommodate this. Uh, but on the other hand, they're extremely useful when they're applicable. In a neck of the woods, where these beautiful and elegant tools can be applied, and heaven say to apply them, but it would be a shame to have to say, well, if we can't apply those, then we can't theorize about it or formalize about it at all because that would seem to be a defeat of cybernetics, and I don't like to have such defeats built in. And uh, there may be situations, I'm sure there are, which defeat all this. And certainly this will, you can model in this, incidentally, any of the system theory stuff, of course, but it's a specialized model. It's, uh, you know, it's a specialized part of it, <coughs> and, um previous uh, sheet, you talk of bifurcation essentially as, as coming into it and producing analogy as a, uh, mm -hmm. uh, a, a requirement, so yeah. The process is bifurcation. Really. Now, the process here you describe, what word do you use to describe the process here where you're producing generalization? It's very similar. It's another kind of bifurcation, in fact. It's, uh, and I'm not even sure it's a different kind because they can be rotated into dual representation. Um, I'm not even sure it's a different kind, but it's usefully distinguished. I just call it generalization, and it carries with it the need to make analogies between what are in this notation are easily expressed as orders. Mm -hmm. I'm hesitant to say levels, we don't actually make a hierarchy this way, you make a loop structure. Uh, it's a, topologically, there's a loop structure, but of many lengths. Because it seems uh, obvious within just the notational level mm -hmm. that your TRS in there, which then becomes an alpha, say, yeah. um, is that implicit in, in your, your uh, unacceptable, uh, una, unacceptable diagram is the idea that at some level or at some time, well, neither level or time being the right words, but P also has been generalized to be P from a, 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 another cluster of subconcepts or so on. Yes, that's right. Of course it has. So we're just, it's just really yeah. a question of uh, when you, you get out of the simply formal system, yeah. deciding that you've, you've got a, an appropriate match between what's broken down to what level and what's not broken down. Yeah. I mean, I could foresee lots of understanding of problems yeah. that arise from breaking some things down and not others, yeah. so that they're really in different categories. Yeah. Of, uh, sure. And as a, but it's actually, it, it, what I'm determined to do with L sub P is actually allow people to say anything and to accommodate L sub P so that it's expressed in a formal way anything they said. Mm -hmm. uh, if I don't have that, in, I mean, I know, I know people are conscious of anything. Mm -hmm. I have no reason at all to be absolutely arrogant and arbitrary as well to, to suppose that people thought or imagined in the same way or that the individuals did or aspects of personality did. I mean, all the institutions of society did. It's the furnace that allow you then to continue to unfold. That's right. The, the, the Meaning that unfold, make comparisons yeah. and That's understand right. what's going on. Yeah. I mean, for example, if you go back to this very sure, it is. I mean, this, this is the this pr the principle of pruning is simply to say, can I represent uh, as an application? Yes. Now I could represent how to learn T. Sorry, I mean, that's the wrong page, is it not? The wrong page of the legitimate one. I said it's how to learn. All right. What else could we say? To do. Uh, to think of 
at all reasonable. Uh, in fact, you can represent easily either of these can represent learning strategies in our previous discussion. It can represent planning, plans of action. Plans of, uh, in in the case of planning, there are a thing called plan A, uh, no plan one, let's say, and plan two, let's say. If we to interpret this as a plan or strategy one or strategy two, if we interpret a learning strategy. Uh, in other words, there are two things called selective proofs in this particular case. In fact, there are for any distributive form. And of course, any interesting mesh has a distributive form, though the isolated one can't be known in fact, uh, like an isolated concept. And its existence depends entirely upon its execution. And it gives just the statement I, like the dot. The blood bunt in in um, in Flatland, Edwin Abbott's Flatland. It, it is just uh, a, a point in Flatland saying I I I. That's all it does. I'll bring you back to a comment you made a few minutes ago. And I think it would be nice to revive here. Uh, a little more of because I think it's related much to the unfoldments. And so we talked at ARA, if you recall, I liked very much your comment about the unfoldment is the dual of the mesh and all the things that we talked about mm. there. But here you just were talking a few minutes ago and we sort of raced by it about, um, I need a little later, but a nice phrase about the. Uh, the bits of language looking for a world to live in. Yeah. And uh, I'd like to talk a little more about what those bits are. Well, and actually, how they look. what we generate is uh, imagining forms in this logic of distinction, which is related to the Spence Brown Gunter, the logic of um, coherence and examining different types of coherence and distinctions are generated in order to make themselves interpretable as some kind of action, action or process going on, application going on. Um, we um, generate forms which are quite curious, as for example, we might say generate a form which will not be too curious now, but I mean, I can think of an indefinite number of these incidentally to generate because you can say anything you want. Isn't it? Let's take a form like this, uh, which exists. You say we generate forms quite curiously? Mm -hmm. or quite curious forms? Is that what you're saying? Mm hmm. Now, we can interpret that, obviously, uh, under the present calculus, it's easy enough. This goes out to omega one. We have to put a subscript or superscript something on that. And incidentally, I don't. I think when you ask what kind of distinction is entailed in this process, uh, I think that indeed what is entailed is um, is symmetric with, and in fact is is a, par a parity wise symmetric with the um, other type of distinction analogy. So I'm not putting hierarchies here, please. I mean, yes, they're yes. not meant to be. And uh, what we do, in fact, is to generate a new kind of uh, domain. Alpha, beta, um, and then RS actually go up here, which can signify by a different couleur of line, actually. Well, that's where they really live. I mean, let's say, I mean, one, I'm not at all convinced that these ones and minus ones, excepting that they certainly loop back to each other by dint of analogy like relation, um, have any specific reality. And that causes us to draw something down here which points analogically at. Uh, possibly two or more, there could be more, categories of exemplars of the things in omega-1. 
No, we can naught, rather. So I'll call those exemplars. Now, you can generate forms of this sort of all kinds. I mean, uh, I mean, naught. The exemplars, these are categories. These generalized, alpha and beta are generalizations of TPQ in omega naught and of LMN in omega naught, uh, which are standing upon an interpretation or exemplification of the entities TPQ in some other universe. Now, I don't think either of Jeffrey or I, or for that matter, Dick, are pretty sure whether or not this is a different kind of distinction. We are sure that that distinction is demanded, that analogy is demanded. I don't think either of us may show where we couldn't turn that on its side and say that's a picture of an analogy relation. And of course there are very interesting analogy relations because you can very well consider these funny things here and notice that to assume topic hood they have to be built into some universe and also that they can be themselves analogically related. So for example if I draw any analogical form I can now indicate uh, uh, and these chains, incidentally, may be indefinitely long and quite different lengths. Uh, and the executability criterion actually relies apparently on having such chains. Uh, and uh, this gives a very large dimension to the process in general, a large topological dimension in the Atkins sense of the process, or, or in the Clifford sense for that matter, the process. And it's it's generally very big, but I mean, consider forms of this kind. There's a couple of analogy relations. Assuming topichood. This is very common. Uh, those have to, they have to assume topichood at some stage. Or consider the form. And deliberately, I am drawing this. This is not an accident in drawing. See? Uh, well, that's an analogy between a boundary which implicitly surrounds a topic, anyhow. And you see, the, the, the boundary actually, you could literally have said, you put these letters in. Why? Why? What did I mean by that con? When I put those letters in, I'm looking for things which, to use a metaphor with, a very particular metaphor with, with parts of physics, are uh, eigen operators that have classes of eigenvalues. And Heinz's extension of that notion, incidentally, in his later work, is very intriguing, and uh, in fact, he developed this whole thing. He talks about computing memories, uh, uh, computing instants from memories, or computing objects from memories. This is the same kind of criterion we're applying here, exactly the same. Uh, and uh, of course, this is a realizable construction, and uh, equally, you can have and. Um, to gamma, if I would call it, or something like this as well, I mean, which is a perfectly good different structure. And then we could ask about this thing. And we could ask whether, in fact, supposing we had um, arranged to rather more things into one of these so that we can actually demonstrate it rather than just having to um, um, F, G, H, J, um, sorry, I should have drawn to the new. I'll put that in there, which of course is illegitimate in its sense. It has to go up into. So that have to go up. So 
And it goes over into a different topic which we will call say X and Y. Uh, existing along with other topics, yeah, M, eta, mu, uh, Y exists with epsilon, delta, say. Um, and these things are related down here. To what? Well, presumably they're related to some of the things that render these topic full. In other words, when you fill in the statement, a distinction and of independence and a similarity a process. Well, supposing I just drew that, it makes good sense. And one therefore does question very seriously whether these pointers which go down to omega zero, because that's placed this thing at oh, something of this, some of its topic is omega, I'm sorry, minus one, it's omega plus one, which is omega naught, naught, one, and uh, it's omega minus one, and it may be or may not be past the same universe as that, that's going to be an omega minus one. Now it's perfectly reasonable, as a matter of fact, it is. As it stands, we can work that one out. But there are some you can't work out yet. And they're not illegitimate, though. They're legitimate. It just means that you have to enlarge, you enlarge thereby the calculus. And um, that has been the philosophy throughout, to do just that. You don't say, I've got some rules, and you must obey them. You don't in language, either. Well, you enlarge the language in yeah. In yes, language, you enlarge the language. Yes, enlarge exactly. The That's why I think this thing rather works as a crude representation mm. of some interesting things, as against a very elegant representation of very few things. See, it's so bloody crude, yet yeah, so oh. bloody powerful, that you can talk about anything by, by definition, it, but on the other hand, it isn't nearly as elegant, for example, as differential equations or something are, when, when they're applicable. And you can have a model of differential equations in this, perfectly. Well. So here we're talking about your phrase, bits of language looking for worlds to live in. Yeah, uh, but yeah what are the bits? I've given you one. Yeah, let's look for a world to live in. Give, give me a description of the bits. I mean, that's a, a, that's a world which bits. certainly, that's a world which certainly has a distinction of topological structure in it, and in which I'm inquiring very seriously whether the blue type analogies are the same as the red type analogies, and I strongly suspect they are, but they are topic related in such a way that they can be. In other words, I think you can turn these pictures over on their side and look at them like this sort of picture. And as a matter of fact, in this particular case, it will work. Uh, supposing it doesn't work, what do you do about it? You have to enlarge the calculus. How do I enlarge it? I just introduce a more complex, but still coherent, uh, sort of topology. And what it amounts to is very much like Atkins stuff amounts to, saying that social events cannot be represented in a one simplex. But all right, if they can't be represented in a one simplex, even if we just take binary relations alone, and most of them aren't binary relations to begin with, and all that binary reducible, uh, then um, in general, we have to induce a traffic on an Atkin back claw, which is an extremely complex, and you have to generate new homotopy groups, and if these homotopy groups apply to something, what is it? I don't necessarily know what it is. But it's looking for an interpretation, it's looking for a world to live in. And this is how mind works, I mean. What is the process? It doesn't, it doesn't give you the rules of mind, it's, it's how mind works. It's rather different. It isn't a. It is not a theory which is meant to be other than crude because it's meant to be open. Meant to be open. 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 Genuinely open. Evolutionary. What is the generator? I don't know. I strongly suspect that the generator is built into one rule, uh, and I'm sure that rule is universal, namely that the same. Although a behavior may be produced by many processes in some topology, some sort of process mapping, some sort of process index, uh, one behavior can never lead to many, sorry, one behavior can never lead to different fundamental processes. In other words, to say, 
is eigenoperator eigenvalue property holds and gives a sort of particular nature to things, but the things to which it gives a particular nature are in no way defined, be they sorts or concrete objects or social movements or desks and chairs, and this is just as applicable to any of these glasses of water. Say that again. Although one behavior, no. Although behavior is. Mm -hmm. Say that again. Well, it's said actually on the earlier sheet in this form X con T, or something like that, X con A I T goes into T, and Burke's X con A I T can't go to something else other than T. It does, it mainly, it cannot in the sense that if it does so, it's going to generate a different concept. And that's going to, this is of course the root of this bifurcation thing, which until who had a bifurcation principle in LP could not model that event. Because obviously this does happen. Organizationally closed systems would simply be little monads. If they're informationally open, this possibility exists. And in particular, one is invoked to talk about the dynamic minimal unit of a little conversation. Uh, and um, I suspect that the generator, in some sense, is bound up philosophically with this notion. And there are many philosophical expressions of the notion. And you can choose more or less from at will uh, between the philosophies of the world, uh, from Augustine or Leibniz or uh, um, anyone who wouldn't, I can say. Certainly Aquinas you can have as a very good candidate for much of this. Uh, you can have uh, Many modern philosophers, good ones, herbs and so, uh, guys who are thinking about this sort of process in different ways. And the sense in which a thing can be a unity and at the same time a developing unity. And it's, it's, a, it's a very pervasive idea. Now you say, what is a generator? I just don't know. But a hunch would be that it's that sort of unit. Um, I feel this is somehow, I feel it, uh, it's only a hunch at all. It's that kind of unit that gives a unity or integrity to something at the same moment as imbuing it with the evolutionary properties so it it doesn't just ossify into a, a fudge and mess of direction. It grows and grows bits and interacts with these bits and so on. Um, and in order to describe this in any way, or to, to theorize about formalize in any way, one has to enhance the ossature of a formalism. Now here's an example. Uh, and you could make other examples. Some of them, of course, crop up, and perhaps the most interesting ones, crop up when users use them. When they try to say these things, and put them into LP expressions. And uh, it, it, it appears in LP as the generator rule. Well, Which is that, sorry? Well, it appears in LP itself as a very early generator rule, which is the effect, supposing I had And supposing I also drew, as is quite legitimate, okay. I may infer, and this is the rule as it appears in its simplest form in the calculus, I may infer, but I can't demand. I may make as a mechanical inference, but I can't demand certain saturations, of which this is one which I might start with, or I start with another, it would be different. Now, I may infer that, but I can't insist upon that. But I can make a real question. It is a real question. You wrote that in blue. Do you, it's a real question, it's not just a question mark. Uh, 
do you think P, S, and K are coherent? There's no reason why they shouldn't be in the construction. In other words, a reasonable inference. It's what an inference is, but it, it's, as you'd expect, it's not a unique inference. You can also ask a question, T, E, R. Given that, or if you start with different ones, you can do. You could ask a different question. Now, these are good questions, in the sense they're generated by incorporating that notion of process into L sub P itself. And, of course, there are forms which are saturated, and which have been examined by Peter Clark in particular. And uh, this one, I think, saturates at quite a large number and forms a thing called Steiner system, which is a term taken out of combinatorial theory. It designates a, a gentleman, I believe, a clergyman who was very interested in combinatorics in the last century and uh, fully filled block system, which we examined in nearly examined in the BCL, not quite. We studied many Stelling type block systems of the sort in collection with uh, connection with with um, coalitions of people, uh, particularly. But um, the or organisms as the case may be, and, um, <coughs> you'll find in the many tabulations of this kind in the um, cybernetics of cybernetics, uh, for example, uh, but uh, and many papers too, but it's, um, I mean, the Steiner system is slightly different. There's another apparently canonical, but there may be wrong form, which is interesting, which has a property of being, this one has a property actually of saturating types that split apart in a variety of white. Uh, this one has a property, interestingly enough, of being a semi-saturated -satur system, not a Steiner system. Well, that's the simplest of them. There are many very complex ones, many multiple ring structures. And I will try to construct it. It's the simplest one. Of course, I'll get it wrong. What I'm doing is to draw in, actually, the prunings, <laughs> and then I get to put bundles around, otherwise I'll still certainly get them all wrong. becomes evident, of course, that what, what I'm doing really is I'm adhering, I'm making the diagram by a, a symmetrical device in, in order to put together uh, the right topics, otherwise it's, it's virtually impossible to do it, because the closure property requires that this thing be connected, obviously, to all of those, okay? Now, these things saturate at various orders and exist for various orders of structure, and all of them have a property. When, I mean, I should draw those around the whole lot. I've drawn it as the pruning type, and we should simply fill in, or I'll fill in another one, which is that one. Just as soon as I start filling in more of them, obviously, the picture becomes a little bit complicated. Um, these are stable resonance structures, in fact, and they, they replicate into infinite replicas. As soon as you go one step further in saturation, as soon as you supersaturate them, at any point, they always produce replicas. It doesn't matter where you oversaturate. The other ones depend very much where you oversaturate them, where there is an information introduction at the level of L sub P, or change in topology. And this is a, this is a very fascinating property. Now, there are lots of things like this known. Is a whole calculus of this stuff, I and mean, it ought to be worked on a lot. I mean, it's got to, it's a field, not only for development in the ordinary sense of possible to do a PhD thesis, I'm sure a lot of guys are doing and have done, but uh, in the sense that they can radically, radically change the, the whole theoretical frame. And it's not a sort of fixed frame which is going to remain forever there. I mean, it's useful to ossify it so it can be applied, it is widely applied by great diversity of users. 
uh, the thought sticker type implementation, for example. So in that sense, you can ossify it, sure, and it's great. You have to, at some stage, uh, have a product which is useful and can be applied to whatever purpose. But um, fine, and that's okay, but that doesn't mean to say that you're going to double